Doc, I think I need my gallbladder out. Why? Because it hurts. Okay, well, we better get a specialist in here to talk about gallbladder. Dr. Callan, come hey. on. Oh, hey, hey, how are you? Do you know anything about gallbladders? Yes, I do, in fact. We're Dr. Callan is a general surgeon who is a specialist on gallbladders, and we're going to give you the whole story here, so pay attention on the gallbladder. What it is, what can go wrong, and what you got to do about it. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. What is your gallbladder? Where does it live, and what does it do? Why do we have one? Yeah, so your gallbladder is like a little, I call it the, the Gucci purse that sits in your abdomen. It kind of stores bile. That's all it does. It okay. just stores bile. Okay. And when you eat a big meal or yep. a fatty meal, you need to digest fatty foods. Right. So the gallbladder will squeeze and send bile down to digest your meals. Right, so yeah. it gets squirted into your small intestine. Yeah. And then allows us to take up that. It's yeah, so it allows you to absorb it. So underrated. Underrated the gallbladder. That's a pretty important function. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the gallbladder. What can go wrong with the gallbladder? Well, so you can get stones in your gallbladder. Okay. Uh, that would be the number one kind of thing that can go wrong. Gallstones, gall also known as cholecystitis. Oh, well, no. no. So there's, yeah, there's... Cholelithiasis. Right, Cholelithiasis is oh, gallstones. Okay. okay, okay. Yeah. Cholecystitis would be the inflammation. Of and the, the first body. thing people always ask is, why did I get this? Okay. Right. And it's just a way your body processes fat. There's like a very complex algorithm you can look up online, but right, it's it, just sort of bad. Isn't the thought that the, 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 the bile's there to help digest some of the cholesterol, and if there's too much cholesterol, then it can kind of crystallize and yeah. become the stone. There's also genetic predispositions to for, like with uh, breaking down blood that can right. create them. So there's a very there's a variety of things, but most commonly it's just diet related. Okay, so what are the symptoms? What will I present with? What will I be feeling if I have gallstones or cholelithiasis? So typically you would eat a meal, mm -hmm. but like probably a big meal or a fatty meal. All right. More commonly. Would chicken wings fall into that category? Oh, chicken wings, so you're okay. there. You're good, there. Good to know. Good to know. Um, I knew the chicken wings would come up again because oh, they yes. tend to come up. Okay. But so I figured that that would be a great example. But basically, you eat your chicken wings, mm -hmm. and you may get pain kind of up in here. Epigastric pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right side. Some mm -hmm. people will describe like a band around the top here. Okay. And that would be after eating your meal. All right. So and, and like what, what causes the symptoms? So you got this fatty meal. You had your chicken wings. Yeah. Just side note. Do you know that we did a survey of our viewers to say, are you on team chicken wing? Or Team Kale. And, and you know, were they all chicken wing? Like 81%. I, I don't like chicken wings, but I'd pick 81%. chicken wings. 81% really don't like Team Chicken Wing. Well, you're also I like the another, sauce. But do you know that also wing. Team Chicken Wing, you're also Team Cholecystitis? That, and not team necessarily. Golf pain. Yeah. If you eat them in moderation. Team Kale's not getting those pains. Okay, anyway, so we got gallstones. We got some symptoms now. Okay, so those are the symptoms. Pain, sort of in the center, maybe to the right side. And how long after I eat this fatty meal? Uh, it varies, but most people will be like two to four hours after they okay, eat. Okay, so quite a while after you eat. So what meal. happens is, if, let's say you have stones in your gallbladder. Yeah. So, and remember, it's, it's, it's squeezing, right? right? To like let the bile out. So if a stone comes here and blocks the flow out, it's squeezing and it can't get everything out. Ah. And so now like it's it's like a muscle trying to get things, and so it gives you this discomfort. Right. Plus the gallbladder will make its own secretion. So if that stone doesn't, so if the stone doesn't bob back into place, okay. the gallbladder will just get big into a balloon. And that is acute cholecystitis. Ah. When the stone kind of bobs back into place, then mm. we call it biliary colic. So There's nothing cute about it though, because that really hurts at this point, does it not? Yeah, it's very painful. When you have these stones, is there a chance that any of them are small enough that you could pass them through that tiny little duct and so go down into your small intestine? So you're right. So some people may present with this pain up in here, uh, could radiate into their back. Yep. And then they might notice their urine will look like Coke. Maybe their poo looks like pale colored, like gray. It has lost its brown colors. color. Mm. And so in that case, it's when a stone has passed here and would block here, and therefore now the bile can't get into your bile ducts. Right. That can be very dangerous. Very serious. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is what it, this what that's the gallbladder. These are some of the symptoms. This is what's going on. Who's at risk for this? What are the risk factors? Are there risk factors? People that are more predisposed to this than others? Uh, so I would say, um, we, I mean, we used to have this algorithm where we'd say women, mm -hmm. obesity, mm -hmm. uh, fertile age group. Okay. Um, 
But yeah, it's pretty much everybody. That's I would pretty say much now. everybody. Yeah. Okay. Feels like it's everyone. When okay. All right. So here it is. I've had the symptoms. I've gone to my doctor. They've gone. They've done a history, a physical exam. Anything specific on physical exam you look for? Uh, well, if you have acute cholecystitis, you're going to have something called a Murphy's sign, where with, when you breathe in, you get pain when you palpate. The, the, the gallbladder, as you breathe in, you kind of bring the gallbladder out, and if it's very painful, then okay. it's a, considered a Murphy sign. Murphy sign? Okay. But you could have a normal physical exam, obviously. Yeah, so yeah. in the cases of biliary colic, most right. patients have, are seeing their GP the next day. The pain lasted you know, anywhere from 30 minutes to two, three hours. Right. So they've gone to see their GP and everything's normal. If you're so, jaundiced, your physical exam is going to be very sure. different. Okay, so that's the history, that's the physical examination. What about investigations? Is there any special investigation. So the best test is an ultrasound because ultrasound okay. is the best way to see these stones. Okay, so you get an ultrasound of your gallbladder and like lo and behold, your Murphy's law was right, Murphy's sign mm -hmm. was right, you got gallstones, what do you do about it? So just back to the ultrasound, what's interesting is that in orthopedics we don't use ultrasound a lot because it's not a necessarily a very good test for like the shoulder or for the knee. For, for the shoulder it's okay, but for the knee we don't use it much. But this is actually the best test, the often best better test. even than a CT or an Yeah, MRI. so a CT will often not see these stones. Mm, so right. you're, and the other thing that's nice with ultrasound is you can see if the stone is mobile or not. So because they, the ultrasound technicians can make the patient move around and they can see yeah. if the stone is moving around or is yeah. it stuck. And yeah. so that would change your management, right? And on the odd chance that they do that test and they don't find it, say there's no stones, but you still have all the classic symptoms. There's one other test that you can do, right? Yeah, so you can do a HIDA scan right. to look at the function of the gallbladder and see if it's if 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 bile is flowing. Like even enzyme, right? They essentially give you a CCK yeah. right, that causes your gallbladder to contract. Yeah. And if that reproduces your symptoms, then you're good. Yeah, and you typically you should see the dye flow right. out of the gallbladder. Okay. okay. Are we done with the ultrasound? Then? No, and and the HIDA scan. I kind of want to get to the HIDA right. scan. Yeah. Right. Okay. We're done with the scans. We got the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. What's the treatment now? So really, it's removing your gallbladder. It's surgery. Wow. Okay. So. Okay. So let's back. So see, honestly, I come into your office. I'm like, no way am I having my gallbladder. I am attached to my gallbladder. Are there any options for me? If you find yes. that magical medication or yes. pill or whatever that makes gallstones dissolve break or break down, right. please tell me because I will buy shares. Okay. And I tell patients that when they don't right. want surgery, I say, okay, let's try diet modification. Yes. If your symptoms get worse, come back. You are aware you have a gallstone. These right. are the symptoms, kind of say, the signs to present to emerge of it. But most people end up with their gallbladder. Got it. It's, I would say it's pretty rare that yeah. once you've started to have symptoms, you're yep. going to keep having them. Okay. Got so it. sorry to those of you who are really against surgery and sort of major interventions. This is just one of those situations where, unfortunately, the standard of care now is a surgical intervention to have your gallbladder removed. Yep. What, like, I mean, why do I have a gallbladder if I can just have it popped out? Like, what's my life going to be like after I have my gallbladder out? I would say most people, there's no issue afterwards. But you can have some uh, lifelong urgency to, to go to the bathroom if you're eating a big fatty meal. Because okay. remember, you're, you've lost your storage pouch. Um, I would say the majority of people, this bile duct, if you look at people's gallbladders or uh, people's biliary system after their gallbladders are out, they're bile duct dilates. So I think we physiologically make a new gallbladder by making this wider, okay. but that's my theory. Okay. Um, but most people adapt. Right. So, so there are some who don't though. So surgery wise, you come to the hospital, it can be an elective operation if you don't have acute cholecystitis yep. or it could be an emergency, usually with a general anesthetic. Yep. It's done. So it's a laparoscopy. Almost routinely laparoscopically yep. unless something. Yeah, it's pretty, thankfully, it still very rare. happens, but rare, yeah. And it's much harder for you to do it open as opposed to with the camera. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> so different it's now. It's hard. And yeah. So laparoscopy just means instead of a big incision, like they, we used to make 20, 25 years ago, now it's done with just some small incisions and a camera and some instruments that go in these small poke holes. Yeah. Average time, how long would this operation take for people? I just say like one to two hours. Depends on how much inflammation you have, you know, the scar tissue. If you've, I would say that as you get lots of symptoms it, and, and episodes and you don't necessarily remove it, it gets a bit more you know, scarred down, and so it right. can take a bit longer. Right. Okay. Same day, you go home the same day after the surgery? Typically, yeah, provided we're happy with the anatomy and how things have went. Okay, and my favorite thing to talk about with any surgical intervention is the risks. What are the risks with this surgery? 
So the most important one that as surgeons we are so cautious about is we don't want to injure your main bile duct, right? Okay. Um, so we have to see a critical view before we, because we have to clip this little cystic duct. Mm -hmm. um, so we put two clips on the cystic duct. There's a lot of concern about the clips in some uh, people, these are titanium clips, mm -hmm. so I always say it's like if you have a joint, right? You, oh, we put tons of metal in Yeah, all and the it's time. no big deal, right? Um, there's also a little artery that kind of feeds it, so we have to do clip the artery and, and this little duct. So we don't want to injure the main bile duct. I, very rarely you could have maybe these little clips fall off, like it would be in the short term where you can get a bile leak. Not common, but it's one of the potential risks. And then we have to be, you know, we have to be cautious not to injure other structures that are in that area okay, too. So one of the risks, then some of the risks are injury of neighboring structures mm -hmm. and neighboring organs. And then I always say with any surgical procedure, heart attack, stroke, death, blood yep. clot, infection. Uh, what about leaving part of the gallbladder in or retained parts or anything like that? When it's, uh, so yeah, I mean in the past when you have a really difficult gallbladder, you can do what we call a subtotal cholecystectomy where you remove part of it. In that case, you also want to take all the stones out that you can see because but that's, again, rare. These are in patients who've had really chronic symptoms and um, their inflammation's been bad. Okay, so those are, the, those are some of the risks, but the risk of something bad happening is very, very, very small with this procedure. Yeah. Now, after surgery, people are gonna have, obviously, routine amounts of pain for days, maybe a week. Yeah, something controlled, person. typically with acetaminophen and ibuprofen as yep. opposed to narcotics. Yeah, I mean, I, pro I maybe give people like five tablets of a narcotic, but okay. a lot, most will say I didn't need it, so. What about um, their eating habits and their bowel habits in the early post-operative period? So I do tell people to be cautious initially with the fatty meals, the big meals, just so that you're not creating any urgency. And like no chicken wings on post up day uh, one? Easy I, with the wings. You could have them, but just be, be near ready. the toilet. So it'll be diarrhea typically. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. loose bowel movements loose because of our yeah. body's inability and, and to And an urgency, it. potentially. Okay. Um, Stay what close if, to the washer. What about the possibility of, of pain still being there after this is done? So there's always, that's one of the potential risks is that removing your gallbladder, with the, maybe perhaps the gallbladder is not the source of your pain. Right, maybe you had two problems or three problems. Yeah, so we try to really narrow it down to the, just that before we operate because we don't want to take out pieces if you don't need them out. Right. Um, but it's still, and in some people where symptoms are less typical, then that's certainly a possibility. Last question. Now that I don't have a gallbladder, I still need bile. So my body's still going to make bile yeah. in the liver. It's You're just store storing it. it. That's right. You're just storing it here now. But a lot of people have, A, do I have to have a special diet or do I need enzymes? Do I need, this is a big business. So uh, in the patients who don't, uh, who do have the loose stools, you yeah. can actually take some bile binders okay. prior to meals to help with that. But otherwise you don't need enzymes to digest food or right. um, your digestion is still the same. The um, other thing is people will say, oh, I gained weight after my gallbladder's out. <laughs> but it's not actually because your gallbladder's out. It's because you now started eating the fatty meals you were avoiding while waiting oh, to have surgery. Oh, so. gallbladder was keeping you in check. Mm -hmm. Interesting. There okay, there now, is. that is a lot of very useful information about the gallbladder and gallstones. The gallbladder, sometimes you can't live with it and you have to live without it. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. Thank you so much, Dr. Callum, for sharing your expertise on this, this organ. We'll see you next time.